fight, you you were do, you were very dominant. You took him down. You kept him down. Uh, was that your game plan? Um, my game plan was to. Um, uh, some people might have thought it was foolish, but it's to actually stand with him toe to toe, and uh, get him into the fight game that he's used to doing the stand up. And then um, the second round, when he when he got comfortable doing the stand up, is when I really wanted to exploit his his ground game, and that's when I went for the takedown. Uh, one because we felt like his ground game wasn't as good as mine, and his takedown defense wasn't as good as mine, and also because my last fight, my wrestling looked horrible, and I just kept getting taken down. So I wanted to prove to everybody that I've been working on my wrestling, my takedowns, and my grappling. So I wanted to kind of hit two birds with one stone. And what does this win mean to you? Uh, it means the world, man. Um, I felt I felt as if um, I felt like as if. I lost, the UFC was going to get rid of me maybe, and I wanted to show them that, you know what, win or lose, I'm going to give it my all, and I'm going to make them keep me. And um, it turned out that me giving it my all gave me the win. How badly were you hurt in that first round? <laughs> uh, which time? The body <laughs> shot. The body liver shot. shot. Yeah, that body shot. Uh, when I landed, I think the whole crowd heard me go, Ugh! and then I was thinking in my head like, Holy crap, Hold, grab his hands, let me catch my breath back. And after I caught my breath back and, you know, threw him off me, then I got my, you know. But, yeah, it hurt. It hurt. I mean, Hominick's known for throwing them huge liver shots. So You said uh, the, the game plan was to stand and trade with him after the first round. Did you somewhat alter that? Because once you were able to get on top of him, uh, you were just controlling him the, throughout the second and third round. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had it in the back of our minds that if we get the takedown and if um, – I, if, if I'm on top, uh, he wasn't going to get up. I wasn't going to let him up, regardless if, he, if I was in his guard. Um, little do people know, Hominick actually has a over, or I mean underrated ground game. His ground game is pretty good, so um, uh, I was content staying in his guard and giving him elbows and stuff, but it was definitely something that we worked on. How did you, uh, just the actual environment coming in here to Montreal, enemy territory, so to speak, uh, against Mark, uh, how did you uh, react to this uh, very lively crowd at the um, Bell Center? Uh, well, I, I, I love Canada, man. Last time I was in Canada, I got my flying triangle. Canada loved me. Uh, <laughs> Canada didn't love me so much when I came to weigh in, but underneath my, my shirt, I, I was wearing a Canadian's uh, jersey, so it went from boo to whoa. So when I came out, I was just, I mean, I just wanted to win the crowd over, you know. I love Canada. I want Canada to like me too, especially that I fought my hero, you know, and I wanted to show them that I was worthy enough to be a fighter for them, you know. So, How tight was that on bar that you had on him? <clears throat> I thought he was going to tap, and apparently not. <laughs> um, uh, I had it on tight, tight, and then uh, he stood up, so I tried stretching my head to balance on, on my head to make myself even longer, but when I felt it slipping out, I was like, all right, whatever, I'm just going to bail on it and get up. And you said it was uh, foolish to stand and strike with him, knowing full well he's uh, <laughs> one of the more technical strikers in the 145-pound division. How'd you feel about that after a while? Um, it <laughs> Uh, like I said, the game plan was to bear the brunt of the storm for the first round and then exploit his ground game the second round, being that I wanted to get him used to, like, all right, there's going to be a kickboxing match. But um, it was uh, – some people might think it's foolish, really stupid. Other people might look at my game plan like, wow, that was actually pretty smart because, I mean, uh, let's face it, you don't want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mark Hominick because, well, like you saw, he dropped me with a body shot. So. What are you going to do to celebrate this victory? Oh man, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go to Disneyland. Yeah. I'm going to Disney World. Correct that. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. You've been wanting to do that for a long time. Uh, yeah, I've never been to Disney World, man. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah, go be a ten-year-old kid again. So. You've, uh, you've had some big wins in the UFC. You mentioned the flying triangle, the flying knee, but coming off two losses in a row and fighting Mark Hominick in, in Canada, was this your biggest win? Do you feel? Yes, um, I mean, uh, knockout of the night, awesome. Uh, tri uh, flying triangle, extremely awesome. But beating Mark Hominick in Canada, Montreal, him being one of my MMA heroes, and me beating him is like, I f uh, it's, it, it outdoes everything that I've done. I felt like, I honestly feel like how De La Hoya did when he beat Cesar Chavez. You know, that was his hero, and that's the way I feel right now. What's next with the Scarecrow? <laughs> Relax, um, start training as soon as I heal up. Um, I'm actually thinking about, I've uh, really been working on my diet, especially for this fight. My last two fights, I felt like I didn't have a lot of energy because my diet wasn't so good. This fight, I kind of changed it up a bit. Uh, me and my coach really 
are looking into it. And uh, I actually am thinking about dropping a 135. Yeah, and winning the title at 135. I know, I, if, I, if I make 135, I know I'll win the title. I think I will be like the John Jones of 135. So you're gunning for Dominic Cruz's title at this point? Whoever has it by, by the time I get there. How soon yeah. do you want to make that decision? I'm going to think about it. I don't know. It's probably going to be a couple trial runs at first, you know, see how I feel. Um, working with the diet, getting a good dietitian and stuff like that. And um, if I can make 35 and dominate, I'm going to do it.